Meanwhile, President announces new actions. Presidents have announced new actions to tackle climate change, tap economic opportunity, and tout a vision of collective global efforts. On day one in office, President Joe Biden rejoined the Paris Agreement, restored U.S. leadership on the world stage, and reestablished his, the U.S. position to tackle the climate crisis at home and abroad. On day one at the U.N. Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference of the Parties, President Biden will outline the bold steps his administration is taking in his whole of government approach to combat climate change, underscore how bold action delivers economic prosperity and peace and security, and rally countries from every corner of the world to step up their ambition and confront this existential threat during a decisive decade. Several days, the United States will be announcing new initiatives to demonstrate our commitment to providing innovative solutions across multiple sectors from agriculture to oil and gas, to combating deforestation, de deforestation, to tackling hard and to abate industries. We're planning for both short-term sprint to 2030 that will keep 1.5 degrees Celsius in reach and for a marathon that will take us, take us to the finish line and transform the largest economy in the world into a thriving, innovative, equitable and just clean energy engine of net zero for a net zero world. That's why today I'm releasing the U.S. long-term strategy, which presents a vision of achieving the United States goal of net zero emissions economy-wide by no later than 2050. And now, more than 100 world leaders have promised to end and reverse deforestation by 2030 in the COP26 climate summit's first major deal. Brazil, where stretches of the Amazon rainforest have been cut down, was among the signatories on Tuesday. The pledge includes almost £14 billion pounds of public and private funds. Now, let's broaden this out by speaking with Executive Director of Eco Champions, Timilade Salami, who is joining me from Glasgow via Zoom. Good to have you join us. Hi, good afternoon. It's so good to be on this call. Good afternoon. Um, let me start by getting your, your thoughts on this later de de latest development where um, more than 100 world leaders have promised to end and reverse deforestation. What do you make of this? First of all, I would like to say that this is quite ambitious and more than ever before, we've not had this number of countries, um, you know, support the fact that they want to stop deforestation. So I think 100 world leaders, it's a remarkable landmark. But I must also say that we must move from promises and pledges into taking real-time actions. We've had a lot of these pledges and promises at the previous COP, but the question is what has been done and what is the milestone that has been achieved so far and how transparent and accountable are these pledges and how are they involving the young people in making sure that this comes to fruition? Mm. And you made a very important point uh, when, when you talked about involve, involving young people, but I'll get to that shortly. W but let's talk about the, your, your skepticism around the, the pledge for deforestation. In 2014, such um, similar uh, pledges were also made to, to stop deforestation, but nothing changed. Why do you think that is? First of all, um, I think I would like to bring this back to Nigeria. Uh, because such pledge was also made um, by our president to say we were going to plant 25 million trees. That was in 2020. And in 2021, we saw a tweet that 15 million has been planted. We don't have, let me say, a GPS of where these trees have been planted. And I would think, I think that the problem really is that there is no accountability because people just make pledges. But what is the plan? Um, what is the milestone that you're looking to achieve? If you say you want to plant 2 million trees, let's assume you want to plant 2 million trees by 2022. Tell us how many you're going to plant in December, how many you're going to plant in January, how many you're going to plant in June, so that everybody can keep track. But what we don't have a plan for, we cannot keep track on. So I think I am I'm, I'm happy about the pledges. Um, we're used to the pledges, we're used to the numbers, we're used to the finance that are being made, I mean the finance pledges that are being made at this place. But the question is, what is being done about it? 
are there real actions in place? Do, do you think that it, is a, it was a wise decision? Because it looks like certain groups have been cut out of the current summit, um, especially um, the oil companies. Shell released a state statement that it will not be sending a representative because um, it was said that they cannot come for the conference. Do you think it's a wise decision to leave out the, the airlines and the oil companies who, who are the uh, bulk of the problem or contribute um, the largest to the, the problem of, of cl climate change? Was it wise to have left a company like Shell out of that summit? I would say that these are the people who contribute largely to the greenhouse gas emission and then to climate um, disaster. And I think not allowing them to come to the summit can be a two-way thing. Probably people are angry and they demand climate justice, which is justifiable. But I think we still need to ask them questions. We need them to be at the venue. We need them to be there so we can ask questions and get answers and not just big promises. They're not there. They don't know what's going on. They're going to be getting filtered reports. And it's just going to be the same cycle of promises. And these guys who are the top polluters, they need to do something urgent. We can make all the pledges and all the promises. But these are the people who need to stop gas flaring. These are the people who need to stop climate injustice for the global south. So they need to be involved. We, we're not even looking forward to working hand in hand with them because the climate injustice is gross. We just mm. need them to stop whatever they are currently doing that are killing people in the communities that are dispossessing people of their land. We need them to be involved, but we need them to take action. So mm. I wouldn't, it might be two way. People are angry and young people especially are very angry. Indigenous mm. people are angry and it is justifiable because of climate injustice. But on the other end, we need these people to provide us answers and their plans to face out coal, their plans to stop gas flaring in countries like Nigeria and the Niger Delta. So we need real answers and we cannot get real answers if they are not present. We don't know what they want to do. We don't know their plans. They just mm. keep, you know, using the media to project whatever they want to do. But we need to know that this is a commitment you're making so we can hold you Absolutely. accountable. Absolutely. And also have plans to, 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 um, to monitor the implementation of those plans. Well, you talked about the anger from young people and just even in general, climate activists and environmental activists. You, 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 you are in Glasgow, Scotland. You must have seen um, the protest in, in front of the venue. Um, some day, even just today, people are angry that uh, it's all talk but no action. But let's talk about young people. You said young people should be brought on, brought on board. I saw, I did see a footage of a young girl, or a climate activist from Uganda, uh, Patience Nabukulu. She literally was crying about the situation in her country and in Africa because of climate change. And um, there was also the brother and sister from Germany, 10-year-old um, Zozo and 12-year-old Kiwi, who were hanging off the, the Clyde Bridge with a message, with a banner that had the message, um, I think it was, uh, humanity is failing. Why? Yeah. And then Greta Thunberg did say something about not being allowed into the conference. Again, was it a wise decision to not allow young climate activists be part of this, of this um, decision? Because it is really about their future. That's right. I would say that we've been advocating and requesting for this to move from just tokenistic engagement into full-time participation and decision-making process. Every time every world leader talks in that room, they make mention of we need to protect the next generation. But you look into the room, you look to, to the far left, you look to the far right, and there are no young people in the room. I was honored to present our intervention at the Yungo, um, at Yungo at the plenary session. Yungo is the youth arm of the UNFCCC. And I must tell you that before we were allowed to talk as young people, almost all the world leaders were out of the room. And it brings me back to the question, who is really listening to us? And are they just saying these things just because the media is there, the cameras are there, and they need to be in the good books. We need to be fully involved, and we need to be in the decision-making process. I know there has been so many conversations around the fact that you know young people are very ambitious, they are not patient, you know, they just want action now. But you can only say that because you've enjoyed all your time and now you're growing old and making profit from whatever business you're doing and it is affecting the young people. I imagine what's going to happen in the next 10 years. I imagine what's going to happen in the next 20 years. 
many species are going extinct we are experiencing mm. global warming and this thing is affecting everybody health wise mentally and is creating um is creating anxiety for most young people and i must say that we we the young people we deserve a space at the table we don't Absolutely. just want to be in your yeah in your magazines in your mm. papers in your media reports that you 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 were able to meet young people we want to be part of the decision making uh, process absolutely and, and the implementation process and as well thank you so much um timilade salami executive director eco champions